Hey, why did the Romans pay their soldiers in salt? Because they wanted seasoned veterans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to my three-part series on salt. I hope that opening didn't assault your good humor. <laughs> okay, enough of that silliness. Today, in part two, I will be delving into the types of salt that you can choose from, as well as the plethora of health benefits one can glean from consuming the correct kind of salt. Now, if you're like most people, when you think of salt, the picture that comes to mind is a white, crystallized seasoning that sits in a shaker jar in your kitchen, right? Would it surprise you if I told you that there's more to this kind of salt than meets the eye? Would it surprise you that the common table salt isn't the best for you because it has been stripped of its sundry of accompanying minerals, and in some cases, that can be upwards of 80 plus minerals, chemically stripped away? Now, in my opinion, I'd much rather consume such a valuable mineral as sodium in its natural form as possible. Well, without further ado, let's get started, shall we? According to this article from Dr. Josh Axe's website, Sea Salt, Top 6 Essential Health Benefits Salt has been used as a natural flavoring for thousands of years. And it's so vital to our existence that a portion of our tongues is even designated to taste saltiness. However, in recent years, salt has come under fire and has been characterized as an unhealthy substance that we should cut out of our diets in favor of heart health. That being said, not all salt is created equal, and there is definitely a difference between unrefined mineral-rich varieties like sea salt versus salt that has been heavily processed and stripped of all of its natural nutrients. So, is sea salt good for you? Does sea salt have iodine? And which types are best when it comes to your health? Keep reading or stay tuned for everything you need to know about this common kitchen ingredient. What is sea salt? All types of salt, including table salt, originate from a sea or a salty body of water, but not all salts currently on the market actually come from the oceans in existence today. So what does that mean? Salts that are not sea salt are often derived from underground salt deposits left behind by seawater at some point. Sea salt is a type of salt produced from the evaporation of current seawater. The evaporation is accomplished by either open air solar evaporation or by a quicker vacuum evaporation process. Some of the pricier sea salts available today often come from the slower sun-fueled evaporation method. When you eat a sea salt that has experienced very little processing, you have a salt that contains health-promoting trace minerals. It also has natural flavors and colors that make it a lot tastier and more interesting to use for cooking as well as homemade beauty products. Sea salt can be either unrefined or refined, although unrefined sea salt is generally recommended to maximize its potential health benefits. Refined sea salt, on the other hand, is washed to strip of it, it of its trace minerals and often contains harmful food additives that trigger leaky gut. Now, let's read and compare sea salt versus table salt. Table salt and sea salt are two of the most common types of salt found on grocery store shelves and spice pantries alike. So, what are the differences between sea salt versus table salt? Table salt is mainly mined from underground salt deposits. It's heavily processed to eliminate healthy minerals and it's manufactured by taking natural salt, such as crude oil flake leftovers, and heating it to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. During this extreme process, the chemical composition is completely altered, destroying many of its potential health-promoting properties. Although the salt chemical formula for both table salt and sea salt alike is mostly sodium chloride, the sea salt composition 
also contains more trace minerals like calcium, magnesium, and potassium. Generic table salt, on the other hand, ends up being about 97.5% sodium chloride and a 2.5% balance containing an array of ingredients including anti-caking chemicals, iodine to prevent goiters, MSG and or white processed sugar to help stabilize the iodine, aluminum derivatives such as sodium silicoaluminate. Most food manufacturers add iodine to table salt, increasing the risk of consuming excess amounts. While higher intakes of iodine are generally well tolerated by most people, it could cause thyroid dysfunction for certain people who may be more sensitive to its effects. For these individuals, keeping iodized salt intake in moderation is absolutely essential and opting for a minimally processed non-iodized sea salt in place of iodized salt may be a good option. Now, bottom line, I personally avoid the highly processed version, which is iodized salt, table salt. As this meme so aptly demonstrates what iodized table salt is, when it rains, it pours chemicals like calcium carbonate, calcium silicate, magnesium carbonate, potassium iodine, dextrose, GMO corn sugar, aluminum hydroxide, which is a neurotoxin linked to, you know, the old timer's disease, Now, let's compare sea salt versus kosher salt versus rock salt. Although kosher salt is another of the most popular types of salt available, few people really understand what it is and what the differences are between kosher salt versus sea salt. Kosher salt stands out because of its large flake size and coarse texture making it ideal for applying directly onto foods with your fingers. Because of its unique texture, kosher salt is often used for draining blood from meat prior to consumption to comply with Jewish laws, which is where it gets its name. Rock salt, on the other hand, is a type of salt that is derived from oceans that dried up many years ago, leaving behind a concentrated amount of salt in the crust of the earth. This type of salt contains a wide variety of important minerals and little to no moisture, but is often classified as one of the purest forms of salt in existence. Himalayan pink salt is one of the most popular examples of rock salt, but other varieties are also available, which are harvested from different regions around the world. Now, these are just some of the examples of white salt. Because of the lack of color, these types of sodium lack many of the essential minerals that the following forms of salt contain. Celtic sea salt versus Himalayan salt. The most common sea salt is Himalayan pink salt, along with another one you might be familiar with, which is Celtic gray salt. The hue that each type of salt takes on will depend upon the location where each kind originates from. The salt's location will also affect the types of health benefits each sort brings to your table. Now, let's explore these two naturally occurred colored sea salts, shall we? Himalayan sea salt. Many believe Himalayan sea salt is the purest salt available on the planet. With a history dating back to Earth's creation, it's believed to be composed of dry remnants of the original primal sea. Known as pink gold or pink sea salt, Himalayan crystal salt is actually a beautiful translucent pink it contains all of the elements found in your body. Because of the amazing nutrient load, doctors of functional medicine report that regularly eating pink Himalayan salt can help regulate the water content throughout your body, promote healthy pH balance in your cells, particularly your brain cells, promote blood sugar health, and help reduce the signs of aging, assist in the generation of hydroelectric energy in cells in your body absorb food particles through your intestinal tract, support respiratory health, 
promote sinus health, prevent muscle cramps, promote bone strength, regulate your sleep, support your libido, promote vascular health, regulate your blood pressure with sufficient water and potassium intake. Now, on a side note regarding Himalayan salt, of the different types of salt, Himalayan pink salt is the purest form of salt in the world and is harvested by hand from the Kura salt mine in the Himalayan mountains of Pakistan. Its color ranges from off-white to deep pink. Rich in minerals, it contains the 84 natural minerals and elements found in the human body. Himalayan salt is used in spa treatments as well as the kitchen. Its mineral content gives it a bolder flavor than many other salts. So use it as a cooking and finishing salt or to add a bit of flair to a salt rimmed margarita. Slabs of the stuff are used for cooking and serving. Himalayan salt retains temperature for hours and unfinished pieces often appear in shops as lamps. Celtic sea salt, another ancient commodity Celtic sea salt is comparable to Himalayan crystal salt in its composition and health benefits. Being of a grayish hue, it is naturally harvested in Brittany, France near the Celtic Sea using a 2000 year old Celtic method that is crucial to preserving its life-giving nutri nutrition profile. It's been reported that Celtic sea salt is incredibly beneficial for your health and can help alkalize the body, balance blood sugars, eliminate mucus buildup, build immunity, improve brain function, increase energy, provide electrolyte balance, promote restful sleep, prevent muscle cramps, regulate heartbeat and blood pressure. Interestingly, this salt retains its moisture and is moist to touch regardless of how you store it. Think of this as a gentle reminder of its ocean source and continual life-giving properties. As WebStrontStore.com so aptly describes sea salts and its various benefits, sea salt retains minerals and nutrients from the sea that are lost in refined salts, gives food a more potent mouthfeel, creates bigger bursts of flavor, naturally contains zinc, potassium, and iodine, resulting in a more complex flavor profile with mineral notes. Types of salt to consider. Well, we've already talked about three main types of salt besides iodized table salt. White sea salt, which can come from a byproduct of desalinization like that from the Mediterranean Sea, Himalayan pink salt, and Celtic gray salt. Believe it or not, there are several others you can buy and try. As far as I've researched, there are at least 12 different varieties besides iodized table salt, white sea salt, Himalayan pink salt, and Celtic gray salt. There is, of course, kosher salt, which is flakier and coarser grain than regular table salt. It's large grain makes it perfect for sprinkling on top of meat, where it releases a surprising blast of flavor. Kosher salt also dissolves quickly, making it a perfect all-purpose cooking salt. However, most kosher salt does not contain any added iodine and only rarely any caking anti-caking agents. Despite the name, all kosher salt is not necessarily certified kosher. Rather, it's used in the koshering process when surface or surface fluids are removed from meat through desiccation. Then there is the caviar of the salts coming from France. Fleur de sel. It literally means flower of salt. It is a, quote, sea salt hand harvested from tidal pools off the coast of Brittany, France. Paper thin salt crystals are delicately drawn from the water surface, much like cream is taken from milk. This can only be done on sunny, dry days with a slight breeze and only with traditional wooden rakes. 
because of its scarcity and labor-intensive harvesting, fleur de sol is the most expensive salt. Five pounds will run you a cool $80, earning it the nickname the caviar of salts. It retains moisture and has a blue-gray tint from its high mineral content and oceanic beginnings. If you can afford it, use fleur de sol as a finishing salt to add an impressive dash of flavor to meat, seafood, vegetables, even sweets like chocolate and caramel. Now, amongst these top 12 salts, here are some other ones that are worth briefly mentioning. There is the Kala Namak, or black salt in Nepalese. It's a Himalayan salt that's been packed in a jar with charcoal, herbs, seeds, and bark then fired in a furnace for a full 24 hours before it's cooled, stored, and aged. Black salt is manufactured differently than the regular table salt, as it contains a combination of sodium chloride, sodium bisulfate, sodium sulfate, and ferric sulfate. This salt is then mixed with charcoal and heated to get the final product. Due to this change in salt composition, black salt has a more in-depth flavor compared to regular salt. And here are the possible health benefits of choosing black salt over table salt because it's low in sodium. And because of this, people with high blood pressure and those on a low sodium diet can use this salt as a safe alternative. Sea salt flakes, or just flake salt. Harvested from salt water through evaporation, boiling or other means, flake salt, maldan, is thin and irregularly shaped with a bright, salty taste and very low mineral content. This shape means the crunchy flake salt dissolves quickly, resulting in a pop of flavor. Of the different types of salt, use it as a finishing salt, especially on meats. Then there's the black lava Hawaiian salt also known as black, just black lava salt. Black Hawaiian salt is a sea salt harvested from, you guessed it, the volcanic islands of Hawaii. It gets its deep black color from the addition of activated charcoal. It is coarse grained and crunchy. Black Hawaiian salt is great for finishing pork and seafood. Then it, there is its related relative, Aleheha red Hawaiian salt, also called just Alaiha salt. This is unrefined red Hawaiian salt, and it gets its name and color from the reddish iron rich volcanic clay Alaiha. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I probably didn't. <laughs> Anyhow, um, used for centuries in ceremonial ways, red Hawaiian salt is also great in the kitchen adding an attractive finish and robust flavor to seafood and meat as well as traditional islands dishes like polkai and pipi kalaha a hawaiian jerky then there are the smoked salt varieties smoked salt is slowly smoked up to two weeks over a wood fire usually hickory mesquite apple oak or alderwood. Smoked salts adds an intense and yes smoky flavor to dishes. Depending on the time smoked and the wood used, tastes will vary from brand to brand. Smoked salt is the best of the different types of salt to use for flavoring meats and heartier vegetables like potatoes. And of course there's just pickling salt. This is used for pickling and brining, as you could have guessed. Pickling salt does not contain any added iodine or anti-caking agents, nor many of the trace minerals of sea salt, which can cause ugly discoloration of the preserved food. Now, as an American, it would be remiss of me to leave out a natural resource that we have right here in our backyard. Redmond's Real Salt from Utah. According to their website, real salt comes from an ancient underground salt deposit that gives its unique benefits. There was an island sea covering what is now Redmond, Utah, 
known as the Sundance Sea. That sea is gone, but it left behind a large, pristine underground salt deposit, which is where we mine real salt. Since real salt comes from an ancient underground salt deposit, we consider it ancient sea salt. And this ancient sea salt has a lot of advantages over its more modern counterparts. First off, it's protected from modern pollutants like microplastics by layers of volcanic ash and clay. It's also filled with 60 plus health, healthy trace minerals that are naturally found in this one-of-a-kind salt deposit. These minerals give it unique health benefits and a deliciously subtly sweet taste. We leave our ancient sea salt just the way nature made it long ago. That means we don't add popular modern day additives like dextrose, sugar, anti-caking agents, or iodine. This ancient sea salt is truly the name or the same as it was when it first came into existence. Now, according to real salt, does real salt expire? Real salt never expires. Real salt doesn't expire because natural salt without additives doesn't ever go bad. Food only spoils when fungal, bacterial, yeast, or other microbial growth takes place. All of these require water. Salt doesn't contain water, so it doesn't support microbial growth, meaning it won't spoil. In fact, salt is actually used as a preservative for other foods, like meat. If you'll notice, we said that natural salt without additives won't go bad. Refined table salt, the pure white stuff you probably grew up using, will go bad. That's not because of the salt, though. It's because of the additives. Iodine and anti-caking agents degrade over time, reducing the shelf life of processed salt to about five years. There's one last benefit of sea salt, and that is bathing in it. Yes, I said bathing in it. If you have sore muscles, arthritis, or any other form of rheumatic ailments, you may want to consider tossing some coarse sea salt into your bath. According to Healthline.com, sea salt can be a way to relieve stress, ease achy muscles, and treat irritated skin while soaking in a tub in general is a nice way to pamper yourself after a hard day, adding sea salts is said to also extend the benefits to your skin, muscles, and joints. It's good for your skin, according to Healthline, like I just said. Your skin, which is your body's largest organ, will also thank you for indulging in a sea salt bath. Board certified dermatologists are recommending sea salt baths for patients with psoriasis, eczema, and other dry skin conditions, explains Dr. Sapna Palap, a certified board certified dermatologist at Spring Street Dermatology. This comes as no surprise, especially when you consider that sea salt baths can help calm the symptoms of certain skin conditions. Quote, salt baths can help remove scales and decrease the bothersome itching caused by psoriasis, close quote, explains board certified dermatologist Dr. Gretchen Freiling. She also points out that sea salts may help people dealing with acne and atopic dermatitis, relieves achy muscles and stimulates circulation. Other benefits of taking a sea salt bath are said to include stimulating circulation, easing muscle cramps, helping to relieve stiffness in joints, soothing achy, overworked legs and feet. So, how to take a sea salt bath? Well, I'm taking a sea salt bath for relaxation. Medical esthetician Holly Cutler recommends the following steps. Add a quarter cup of sea salt to a standard size bathtub filled to your comfort. Aim for a water temperature of two degrees warmer than your body temperature to experiencing to experience the healing benefits of the sea salt bath. Soak in the tub for 15 to 20 minutes or your desired time. When you finish your bath, dry off and apply a moisturizer to your skin. If a quarter cup is not enough, Dr. Freiling says that depending on a person's body size and skin condition, 
a healthy adult can add up to two cups of sea salt to warm water in a standard sized tub. So the takeaway is taking a sea salt bath not only helps you relax, but it can also ease achy muscles and joints, stimulate circulation, calm irritated skin. Soaking in a sea salt bath before bed can also promote better sleep. For more information, check out the healthline.com link I have provided in the description box below. In fact, I have included all the links to the articles I used in gleaning this information to share with all of you in the description box below, and I encourage you to read through them all. And with that, this concludes part two of this three-part series on salt. I hope that you were able to glean some useful tips on this God-given resource. As always, since I am no medical expert, I simply present this information to you so you can do your own digging into this topic and decide for yourself what is best for your health along with consulting your own medical practitioner. Now, if you missed part one, I encourage you to click the link that I will insert right here in the R card. By the way, if you like what you see, please hit the like button. I'd also love to hear some feedback from you. So feel free to drop a comment down below in the comment section. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please click the, no, uh, the no, uh, subscribe button. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. Signing off until next time. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Hey, why did the Romans pay their soldiers in salt? Because they wanted seasoned citizens. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll see salt my way on out of here. <laughs> hey, why did the Romans feed... Hey, why did the Romans feed... Pay, not feed, pay! <laughs>